In this episode of the Secret Manager video series, we'll talk about the principle of least privilege and how you can limit who can access your secrets. Do you want to limit access to your secrets? Stay tuned to find out how. The principle of least privilege says that an entity must only be able to access the information or resources necessary to perform its function. In the context of Secret Manager, this means humans and machines should only have access to the secrets that are required to perform their function. For example, a security engineer may have full control to create and manage secrets, but an application developer may only have permission to access a single secret. But how do we accomplish this? To tell us more about how to adopt the principle of least privilege with Secret Manager, I think we need to bring in an expert. Hey Nick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks Seth, thank you so much for having me. So Nick is a software engineer at Google who works on Secret Manager. Nick, earlier I was telling our viewers about the principle of least privilege. Could you tell us a little bit more about how Secret Manager helps users adopt this principle? Sure, Seth. So in Google Cloud, most controls are implemented using Cloud Identity and Access Management, or IAM. IAM provides very granular permissions that are combined into roles. Secret Manager currently offers five granular Cloud IAM roles. First is the Secret Manager Admin IAM role which grants full access to administer secret manager resources, including creating and deleting secrets. Then the secret manager viewer IAM role grants permission to view the secret metadata on secret manager resources, but it does not include the ability to access secret payloads. This is useful for auditing secrets um, without actually seeing the payloads inside. Then the secret manager secret accessor IAM role grants the ability to access secret payloads, but does not grant any administrative permissions. This is useful for humans and applications that need to access a secret, but don't need permissions to manage those secrets. The Secret Manager version manager IAM role permission, grants permissions uh, to manage versions of existing secrets, but it does not include the ability to access secret payloads or view or update the metadata on any secrets themselves. Finally, the Secret Manager version adder IAM role grants permissions to add new versions to existing secrets, but it does not include the ability to access secret payloads or manage any versions or secrets. This is useful for applications that might need to perform simple rotations. Okay, so it sounds like Secret Manager has this really nice separation of concerns between managing secrets, um, auditing secrets, rotating secrets, and accessing secrets. So this will definitely help me adopt that principle of least privilege. But wouldn't granting someone secret manager's secret access or permissions give them access to all of the secrets in my project? Yeah, so that really depends on where you grant that IAM permission. Secret manager's IAM roles can be applied globally on a whole project or individually on just a single secret. If you grant an entity, like a user, the secret manager, secret accessor role on the project, then that entity can access all the secrets in the project. But if you grant the secret manager, secret accessor role to just an entity on a single secret, then that entity will only be able to access that one secret. Okay, so it sounds like if I really wanna follow that principle of least privilege, I should apply IAM roles at the most granular level. That's right. Since Cloud IAM's default policy is to deny, applying roles at the most granular level is what really helps you achieve that principle of least privilege. Okay, awesome. But Google Cloud has these built-in roles like project editor and project owner. How do those built-in roles map to these secret manager permissions? That's a really good question. Um, so project owners are kind of like super users. So they have full permissions to access and manage secrets. Even if we remove this permission, they could just grant it to themselves because uh, they are also full IAM policy administrators. Okay, that makes sense. We could 
take it away, but they could just, you know, add it back yeah. themselves. Yeah. Well, however, perhaps unlike other DCP services, the ability to access secrets and the ability to change IAM permissions on secrets is not actually granted to the project editor role. And that includes the default compute engine service account. This means that only project owners and entities who are explicitly granted permissions can access secrets in your project. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. This really makes it clear how Secret Manager can help adopt the principle of least privilege. Okay, let's take a look at how to practice the principle of least privilege with Google Secret Manager. I created a secret that contains my Twilio API key, and I need to grant my cloud function permissions to access that secret. Now, I could go to the Cloud IAM settings and grant my cloud function service account the secret manager accessor permissions. But as we learned from Nick, that isn't a best practice because that would allow my cloud function to access all of the secrets in the project. Instead, we want to follow the principle of least privilege and grant access only to the secrets that my cloud function needs. To do this, I'll head over to the secret manager console, select my secret, expand the info panel, click add member, and grant my cloud function service account permissions to access the secret. Here, I apply the IAM policy at the secret level, meaning my cloud function won't have access to the other secrets in my project. I could also grant this permission using the gcloud command line tool or from the API using any of the secret manager SDKs for .NET, Go, Java, Node, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Google Secret Manager makes it easy to adopt and practice the principle of least privilege. That's all for this episode. In the next episode, we'll talk about audit logging and forensics with Secret Manager. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications about new episodes. For even more tips and tricks with Google Secret Manager, click subscribe to Google Cloud Platform. Thank you.